how much is MIT's? Let me see. Jesus Christ, forty-eight thousand four hundred and fifty-two dollars. Yep. Okay. Focus. Thank you. If you guys didn't know, I um, I hacked my camera so that I could, you know, yell focus at it, and it does it on command. You know. What is this bit that I'm doing? It's so sad. Hello, welcome to Dummy Codes, where I <laughs> talk code and forget my intro every single time. Today, where I'm shooting 50 videos in one single day, but changing my shirt to try to hide that fact, we're gonna be talking about resources for self-taught programmers or programmers in general, because we all know that it's hard to find any type of information on the internet when you are frustrated and don't know what to f Google. When I first started attempting to be a programmer, my biggest issue was I didn't know where to find anything. I didn't know what anything was. I felt like there was a lot. Everything was overwhelming, right? Still is, by the way. <laughs> Still is. But I'm more comfortable with knowing the fact that I have skills like Googling. Googling can become a skill when you're a programmer. You don't just copy and paste code and be like, hey, what is this error? Sometimes that works. Sometimes the answers to your error questions were never found so you have to dig deeper oh those are fun today i wanted to present you guys with some options and resources that have helped me in terms of when i got stuck when i wanted to know more about a certain topic when i didn't understand something and i wanted to truly deeply understand it and yeah let's begin again because i know i've said that before one major thing that's helped me are online communities so like i told you guys before i've been to a boot camp which you don't need to go to by the way um but i've been to a boot camp before and just having a community online where i could talk to and ask a bunch of questions has helped i've found that especially in these youtube videos people help each other in the discord people try to help each other i know i don't have a big you know fan base but people try to help each other uh you could go to places like reddit someone must have posed a question like five years ago that it's been answered a thousand different ways a thousand different times but there's so many communities um there's so many places where you could just ask questions to a regular everyday type of person and Hopefully they will help you. Google, I understand. I could hear you all saying, we know, but no, really get better at Googling, get better at understanding your problem before you just type in whatever. Sometimes copy and pasting your problem into Google search bar and just coming up with an answer will work. But what happens when you find your question has been posted before, but nobody has answered that? How are you gonna find that? Get your Google game up. That's all I'm trying to say. Your skill at finding what you need or solving a problem will get better and better over time because you start to understand what you're working with. If you're working with a specific React problem, for example, if you're working with a Node.js problem, the more you code, not only will you understand how to do things correctly, but you'll also understand how to avoid things. And that only comes from reading and understanding. Sometimes you might just read some little tidbit of information that you might not need for now, but your brain will naturally store it for later. Like how you could bind with arrow functions. Some of you guys might not know what the hell I'm talking about, but some of you guys might. I didn't know that though someone taught me. For me personally, I pay $5 a month for medium.com because I kept, they kept begging me. Honestly, <laughs> I would research some type of programming problem or some type of concept and some programmer's blog or some type of article that a programmer wrote would come up and I would only be able to read half of it because Medium wanted me to buy the $5 thing. So I bought the $5 thing and then I don't regret it. It takes $5 out of my account every day. But what is Medium? I use Medium because I hate documentation. I don't hate it. Dislike reading documentation when I am completely lost or frustrated. I'm not gonna be in the mood to like try to break down the big words. I'm not. So I use Medium because programmers will deeply explain something from their perspective and sometimes their perspective might work better than documentation because they're just dumbing something down for you. And again, don't be ashamed at sometimes the fact that you're not gonna understand some documentation. Sometimes you're gonna need someone to dumb it down for you like two or three times before you really get it. But once it clicks, it clicks forever, right? Say if you don't understand what arrow functions do, I guarantee you there is a bunch of articles about arrow functions, right? Horrible example, because <laughs> Free Code Camp is another resource I would say to use. It's just the community on there has grown so much. Um, if you guys don't know what Free Code Camp is, you just learn from CSS and HTML all the way down to I think they have Django and I think you learn React also. It's all on their website. You don't have to download anything. And there's just so much information on there. 
Um, and anytime you get stuck, there's a whole community of people who've gotten stuck with you or have gotten stuck before you, right? So you could ask them questions and typically because it's so specific to that problem, answers or solutions you're gonna get are gonna have to do directly with that problem. So for example, you and some other guy in Minnesota might have thought of the same solution, but it doesn't work and you go into the discussion and they're like, hey, it doesn't work, but why doesn't it work? and someone explains to you deeply, now you know another little tidbit of information that you could save for later, right? Lead code is another great resource. So if you've, you know, done the grinding of teaching yourself or if you are a student who is about to graduate soon, lead code is another great resource. So say if you are like me and you're prepping for a coding interview or technical interview, whatever you want to call it, you go on the easy and you get stuck because, hey, what's going on here? Um, people, you know, show their code and they explain their code and you could see the solution to a specific problem in Java, in Python, in whatever language. Typically, all you have to do is search it up and there it is. I think it's a great resource once you get to that interview stage. I think most people and all people should use it, especially if you don't have that type of money to, you know, do all that extra. YouTube. YouTube is great because it allows me to say that I could, I went, I went to MIT and then I went to Stanford and then I went to Harvard. I could say all that, but no, really YouTube is a great place because there's so many resources and so many explanations of the same thing. There's literal videos of, you know, algorithms and data structures that could be explained to you by an MIT professor for free. How much is MIT's, let me see, Jesus Christ, $48,452 in 2016-17 to go to MIT and that's guaranteed to have gone up because it's been three, four years now. I'm a very big fan of taking what I need. You know, take what you need. You don't have to pay that when all you have to do is, you know, understand this one single concept, then you're out. And there's also that random indie dude on the internet who will give you the greatest advice. <laughs> And the greatest coding tips. You will find an Indian tutorial somewhere in there and it's always like, it's sweet. You know, once you get into those things, you're like, this makes no sense. And there's nobody else explaining it but that one Indian guy with that noisy microphone in the background. Yeah, we've all been there, but once you've been there, you, you, you like coding. You know, there, there are a bunch of tech YouTubers out there too. I don't know if it's coding YouTubers or tech YouTubers, but point is there are a lot of those out there I guess I'm finally one. For me, I want to motivate people to keep hustling on their journey. I want you know, to show my projects and share my story and you guys share your stories. But there's also people like Clement, the algo expert guy who literally just helps people. <laughs> like, and yes, he, he talks about the business he started, he talks about his journey, he talks about the best ways to get into companies. There's people who just code for fun. You can just watch them code for fun. There's a guy who makes tasers for fun with some coding. Um, there's just different ways to get inspired and motivated. It doesn't always have to be a tutorial, right? And that's what's great about YouTube. If you're new, also go to Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is typically where you're gonna find all your solutions or some type of explanation. So say if you copy and paste some type of issue that you just found, the first link is typically gonna be Stack Overflow. You're not the first person to have this issue and you sure as hell will not be the last. Enjoy Stack Overflow. Someone might call you stupid at some point. Try not to comment anything, I just go Go on there, learn what I can, and I get out. And my last thing that you guys would learn or should learn is GitHub. Why should you learn GitHub? Um, if you're in a very early stages, you might have heard of GitHub and you might be looking at it like, ah, what? Like, I don't understand the point of this. I did not understand the point of GitHub. In fact, the first time I ran into GitHub, I think I just did one thing. It's on like my, my activity graph, then I stepped out. GitHub is a place where you could definitely learn how to read other people's code. Find a project on there and just try to read the code and understand what it's doing. That's what GitHub is. Obviously it's another way you know, to push up your code and collaborate with people all over the world and you know make things open source. For newcomers, it's a great way for you to learn how to read other people's code. It's a great way for you to you know read documentation. Uh, it's a great way for you to contribute to other people's code and maybe, you know, Someone might actually merge your code to their project and be like, hey, thanks. It's 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 just a great place all around. I think that's it. Uh, <laughs> this, this honestly, that that is my free list of resources for new programmers, and I hope you all enjoy it. Um, I hope you found some value. I hope you wrote this down somewhere or in your notes, but please check them out for five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever. Do yourself a favor and check all these places out because it will help.
greatly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment because it helps the channel greatly. And I keep forgetting to ask that in the beginning of the channel. So I'm just going to put this in the beginning, even though this is the end. All right. Jesus Christ. I'm bad at this. Thank you.